Teresa, what are you doing? I've been calling you nonstop for an hour. Today is not a normal day. It's crucial for us. Please answer me right now. Oh, Mansi, I'm sorry. I guess I was so lost in my own thoughts. I didn't notice your calls. <laughs> Teresa, please snap out of it and tell me where you are. Don't you remember that today is the day we've been dreaming of? It's the day I get married. Yes, Mansi, I know how important today is. I'm glad you remember because we discussed everything last night. You said you had a previous plan to hang out with some friends. So you stayed over at a friend's place to avoid traveling in the morning. You promised me you would be at the wedding venue before I finished getting ready, right? Yes, that's true. I gave you my word, but um... But it looks like we're already running late for the ceremony. Have you checked the time? Well, the thing is, the party with my friends went a little late and unfortunately I fell asleep and overslept. I can't believe this. How could you oversleep on a day that means so much to both of us? Don't be so harsh, Mansi. Trust me, I tried my best to avoid this. Well, your best wasn't good enough. But please, do whatever you can to get here as soon as possible. What? Right now? Do you really think I can make it on time? Just hurry up and get ready. Time is running out, and we can't waste any more time. Even if you're late, you have to show up. Can I have a moment with you? Teresa, have you arrived at the venue? I'll pick you up at the entrance. No way. What do you mean? You didn't even make it to the reception on time. Let me explain. I drank too much yesterday. My face is bloated. We'll have our pictures taken during the wedding, right? I don't want people to see me in this state. And taking my picture, I I'm not going. Please don't be childish, Teresa. You are a beautiful woman. No one is more beautiful than you, so you don't have to worry about that. Are you sure? Of course. Well, I could stand next to you and be mistaken for your sister. I know I'm as good as you. I guess so. But I still don't want to go with this bloated face of mine. You're a woman too, so you understand that, don't you? Of course I understand, but today is the wedding day. We can't just change it to another day. It's your son's wedding. Then it's even worse. There's no way I'm going to a wedding with this horrible face. I must always be beautiful. My beauty is no less than yours. If you feel that way, why didn't you refrain yourself from drinking too much? That's because I was having so much fun. I told you I'm not going to the wedding, didn't I? Oh, you'll be fine if you take a bath in hot water and then cold water. Then I'm sure the bloating will go away. What? How could I be so brazen at my friend's house? Well, please hurry to the wedding venue anyway. I'll ask the staff at the wedding venue to help you. But... What's wrong? What if I get burned by the hot water? It'll ruin my beautiful skin. You just need to adjust the water temperature. I don't want a scar on my beautiful face. I see. Then what are you going to do? We're running out of time, you know. You're so carefree, thinking it's someone else's problem. Huh? What do you mean? Don't you feel sorry for me who overslept and missed the meeting? Gosh, just come to the ceremony as soon as possible, okay? Don't say it so easily. I have a bloated face. I'm saying I can't go with a face like this. Don't be selfish. I don't understand what you're trying to say. As a bride, you only need to make yourself look beautiful. You don't even care about me. I can't believe you want me to come to the wedding with a bloated or even burnt face. I didn't mean it that way. I genuinely just want you to come to the wedding. Don't get carried away just because you're younger than me. Think about my feelings, too. I don't want to go to a wedding when I can't show everyone how beautiful I am. Do you understand? My heart is more delicate than yours. I'm sorry. I don't really understand what you're trying to tell me. If you're telling me that you won't dress up and put on some extra makeup, I might change my mind. I'm letting my makeup artist and the staff at the wedding venue do their job properly, so there's nothing I can do to change it. Or rather, you just don't want to do it because you don't want me to look better than you. That's not the point. I just want you to come and witness our wedding. Well, I quit. Quit what? I've been very tired since this morning. I beg your pardon? I'm tired of being rushed by you. And I'm stuck here because you're bullying me. So you need to cancel the wedding today. I can't do that. The main event is coming up soon, Teresa. I've already decided the wedding has to be another day. Ugh, come on, Teresa. Give me a break. Stop being selfish, please. Mansi, how dare you talk to me like that, huh? Just do what you're told, okay? I'm sorry, but I can't help you. You're so stubborn. 
I told you, I don't want to go today because my face is swollen. There's nothing I can do to help you with that. If I don't go, then you have no choice but to cancel the wedding. Because the wedding without the groom's mother is like a French dinner without the main course. Sorry, I don't follow. I think the main course should be the bride and groom. What are you talking about in terms of glamour, of course? The main course is me, right? Are you going to have a wedding without the main course? I still don't get it. Anyway, I'll pay for your cab, so please come to the ceremony now. We need you here. And you are always beautiful, so please don't worry about that. Teresa, have you gotten a taxi yet? We still have a chance to make it to the ceremony on time. I've changed the schedule for the dressing ceremony to make up for any delays. Also, I've talked to the makeup artist to make sure they're ready to make you look even more beautiful when you get here. Don't worry, everything has been planned for your comfort. It amazes me, Mansi, how you ignore what I say. I've told you so many times that I don't want to go today because of how I look. That's why I've been asking for a delay of the wedding. I understand how you feel, but if we postpone the event, we'll have to pay a consolation fee. Of course, that's obvious. And finding a new venue for another day would cost us more money. Considering that, are you willing to pay for these fees? That's ridiculous. Why should I pay for a wedding that's not mine? You're being unrealistic, Mansi. I'm saying this with respect, Teresa, but we don't have any extra money. The idea of booking another venue or paying a cancellation fee is not possible. We have no choice but to go ahead as planned. And what does that mean for me? Time is running out, Teresa. I beg you to get to the wedding venue as soon as possible. Postponement is not an option we can consider. I've made myself very clear. I cannot go with my face all swollen like this. I hear you. Have you finally got my message? Do you need me to resend what I said? Huh? Are you saying that you're not coming to the wedding at all? I have to say, after hearing you over and over, I'm starting to get your point. If that's your final decision, I'll let the ceremony coordinators know. Is that okay with you? Yes, that's fine. It's totally fine with me, you know? In that case, I'll ask you to tell your spouse and your son that you're not coming to the wedding. Why do I have to do that? Teresa, it was you who said you're not coming. It's only fair that you tell your family yourself. That's something you should do. Your logic is flawed. It's your fault that you drank too much and slept in. Now, you don't want to go to your own son's wedding because of your puffy face. Do you want me to tell your husband and son that? You're so incompetent. You don't have to go into the details. Just make up any believable excuse, like a sudden illness. I can't believe you want me to lie about why you're not coming. Today is the most important day of my life, and you want to delay it. It's your fault for trying to be more beautiful than me. I'm the one who's suffering here. It's your job to make sure the main guest is taken care of properly. Hey, my husband hasn't come home. Do you have any idea about what's going on? The wedding has been postponed, right? Do you know where he is? Well, of course your husband hasn't come home yet. Your husband is still here. Oh, glad to hear he's still with you guys. I'm sleeping off my hangover. Tell him to get some painkillers on the way home. Hangover, huh? That's the reason why you couldn't come to the wedding. Now I understand. That's not the main reason anyway. By the way, I need to tell you something. In the absence of the groom's mother, I'm happy to report that the wedding went off without a hitch. What are you talking about? Are you really that upset that it was postponed? Stop making stupid jokes. I'm not joking, okay? Without me as the main dish, there's no way you can go on with the wedding. You're wrong. The people who attended celebrated in a big way. They were very happy that you, who always brag and complain a lot, were not there. They were very happy to see me instead. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Enough already. I don't want to hear any more lies from you. I told you I wasn't joking or lying. I never said that I agreed to postpone the wedding. Huh? What on earth are you talking about, Mansi? I ask you whether you want to come to the wedding or not. And you told me that you're not coming. Am I wrong? You're right, because I'm not coming. You decided to postpone the wedding, right? No, I didn't. You couldn't make it. So, I just have to go on with the wedding without your presence. Huh? So you're telling me that you had a wedding without the beautiful groom's mother? Yes, because me and my husband are the main actors. How could you be so selfish? I've never heard of a wedding without the groom's mother. It was my first time too. I don't want to waste my money and time for a selfish woman like you. 
If I cancel the wedding and rebook the ceremony, it would cost us a fortune. I can't waste that kind of money. You can't just decide that on your own. First of all, a wedding without the groom's mother is out of the question. My husband would never allow it. You're just making fun of me, aren't you? No, your husband agreed right away. Huh? What? Now the payback begins. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I just told your husband about everything. That you drank too much last night. Not only that, you texted me that you don't want to come to the wedding just because your face is bloated. In the end, he also said that I should postpone the wedding for your sake. Now, your husband is well aware of the situation. Huh, I, I can't believe you did that. I'm going to get scolded by my husband. My son will be mad too. I have no doubt they will. They were very upset. <laughs> really? Why'd you do that, you witch? It's all your fault, Mansi. What are you going to do to solve this? Well, I can't do anything to help you. It's your own fault. I guess you have no choice but to solve it on your own. Enough, Mansi. Stop blabbering nonsense. I have some advice for you. I think you should let your husband and son know before they get angry at you. I can't. I'm too scared to do that. When you do something wrong, you should apologize, honestly. Didn't your parents teach you that when you were a child? I'm not a child. Don't joke around at times like this. I'm not joking. You should apologize. After all, you overslept and missed your son's big day. Oh no. By the way, I need to tell you something. What is that now? What do you want, huh? When your husband and son saw me exchanging messages with you, they immediately decided to go back home. They're taking your elder sister with them too. I think they'll arrive at the house soon. What the? Why didn't you tell me this earlier? I forgot all about it because I wanted to tell you that the wedding went well. How could you forget something so important? Oh, I just heard the doorbell. Well, looks like it's sooner than I expected anyway. Teresa, please do your best to put your thoughts into words when explaining your situation. Wait a minute. You have to deal with this problem because it's all your fault. Oh my god, Mansi, what the hell's going on? Excuse me? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't pretend that you know nothing about this, Mansi. You know something, don't you? About what? You're just making me so confused. Don't play dumb with me. My husband suddenly asked for a divorce. What? Divorce? Is that so? Stop being a hypocrite. You know something, don't you? Marriage-related problems are delicate, so I don't want to interfere. Speaking of which... What? If you know something, tell me quickly, Mansi. Your husband said that your attitude and language towards me are very rude. Huh? I'm only doing what most mother-in-laws do when they're dealing with their daughter-in-laws. Since you're my son's wife, I can at least be a little stern with you. You always go out as you please. Besides, you are also spending your husband's money without permission. Is that true? Well, you see I'm beautiful, right? That's why I have so many friends and they often ask me out. My monthly allowance is not enough. I see. Looks like it's very hard to keep up with friends when you're married. I have to be very careful too. But... What's wrong? I can't believe my husband just asked me for a divorce because I overslept on the day of the wedding. I didn't expect my husband would be so furious over something like that. What do you mean? I think what you've done was intolerable. Oh, there's one more thing I need to tell you. Could you just say it all in one sentence? I'm sorry. <laughs> I left out something important. You were together with another man, weren't you? Huh? What do you mean? I heard from your husband that the day before your son's wedding, you were together with a man you're having an affair with. What? Affair? Are you sure about that? If that's true, no wonder your husband and son are so angry. He's not my cheating partner, he was my friend, and that's it. So, you were sleeping with him and overslept? Yes, he's just a friend. But it was just the two of you, wasn't it? And I suggest you stay at his place the night before your son's wedding. I don't think he's just a friend of yours. I could understand if you're staying at one of your female friend's houses, but you didn't. Let me explain, he's just a friend. There's no point in explaining that to me, you know? <laughs> you need to discuss that with your husband, since you are still a married couple. Did I make myself clear to you? Bye then. Hold on a second, Mansi. Hello, Mansi. Can you chat now? What do you want, Teresa? I told you to talk to your husband. Did you do that? 
Honestly, he didn't listen to me at all. He's determined to divorce me. I'm not surprised, considering how much of his money you've wasted on your affairs. Just this morning, when you came out of your lover's house, one of my husband's friends saw you and took a picture of you cheating. Is that true? Yes, it is. He showed me the picture at the wedding reception, saying that the woman in it looked just like you. So he took it as proof. That's unbelievable. Are you kidding me? The evidence is clear. You can't deny or lie about it. Given this situation, what do you think I should do? I don't have the answer to your problem, but I think the best thing you can do is apologize sincerely. You sound like you don't care about this at all, right? That's right. This has nothing to do with me. I've always been faithful in my life, and I plan to stay that way. Right now, my husband's telling me to get out of the house. That's too bad. I suggest you say sorry to him as soon as possible. Now, let me ask you, did you apologize to him? No matter what I said, he wouldn't change his mind. He's too angry to forgive me. I see. Right now, my older sister, who's with me, is trying to help me. She wants to take me away from the city and back to the simple life of the countryside. Is that what your sister said? She blames me for everything. That makes sense. It's all your fault, and I don't think your sister can do much to fix it. No, I don't want to go to my sister's place. I want to stay with my husband. Teresa, you need to face reality. Do you realize how serious your actions are? You portrayed your husband and your son with your affair. It's normal for them to be angry with you. You have to take responsibility for what you did. It's not that simple. You have to understand that I'm feeling the effects of last night's drinking and it's not fair to criticize someone who's already in a tough situation. That's why I told you to stop your nonsense and deal with the consequences. I don't want to waste my time answering your endless, useless messages. I have a lot to do, and I want you to solve this problem as soon as possible. Stop being selfish, please. I can't stand the idea of divorce. I don't want to leave the home I made with my husband. I beg you, Mansi, to speak for me to both my husband and my son. I'm sure you'll help with that. They'll forgive me. I'm sick of hearing you talk. The thought of having you as my mother-in-law makes me sick. So, I won't help you with your husband and son. You're so cold. Right now, you're the only person I can rely on, so please help me, Mansi. I don't want to be your support. Your actions almost ruined my wedding day. If I could, I would have cooked you out too. But even though we barely know each other, I thank you for your hospitality until now, Teresa. Please wait. I need your help, Mansi. I beg you. Right after it happened, I rushed to my in-law's house, feeling very anxious. When I got there, I saw Teresa crying her eyes out, begging me to forgive her. Even though I was upset, I acted like I didn't know her, pretending she wasn't there. As I realized what was going on, Teresa, with a sad heart, agreed to end her marriage. Then her sister, who was there for her, took her back to the peaceful countryside where they came from. The mood was very sad, and my father-in-law looked very unhappy. Seeing how sad he was after his wife left, I offered him to come and live with my husband and me. He gave me a small smile, a quiet yes to my offer. From then on, my father-in-law, my husband, and I lived happily in our big house. As for Teresa, I didn't know what happened to her. Her story went on without me knowing. I couldn't tell you what she did, because her path split from ours at that important moment.